Thank you for joining today's online travel presentation, where we uncover the best of Rocky Mountaineer in the Canadian Rockies. My name is Lynn, and I am pleased to be one of your presenters today. Um, before we begin, I'd like to quickly take care of just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the first is that we're going to hold all questions until the end. So if you have questions during the presentation, please type them in the comment box in the GoToWebinar toolbar, and we'll cover them at the end of the webinar. And second, there will be two polling questions during the presentation, and we encourage you to participate. So let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, I'm Lynn, your presenter from Vacations by Rail, and I am pleased to introduce our special guests, Michael from Rocky Mountaineer and Michelle from Travel Alberta. Melissa, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Melissa. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. No worries. No worries. <laughs> so, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Melissa have some great content to share with you, and I'm excited for us to dig into one of the most iconic train journeys in North America and some of the most amazing destinations you'll experience once in the Canadian Rockies. But before we get started, I want to share just a little bit about vac vacations by rail. We are the leading rail vacations company in the United States and the trusted authority on rail with the largest collection of vacations to destinations around the globe. And the cornerstone of each itinerary is an iconic rail journey. Um, vacations by Rail is a great rail journeys company, which means we're backed by more than 45 years of experience in the specialty of global rail tours. And we are also a member of the National Tour Association, American Bus Association, and we are AARP's preferred rail provider. And in addition to unmatched vacations, we offer best in class customer care from your first caller email to your return from your trip. So a rail vacation is a great way to get a new perspective on the region through which you're traveling. Um, this is experiential travel at its best. And a rail journey with vacations by rail offers a distinctive and memorable experience with a well-planned itinerary that has quality inclusions ranging from that iconic train journey to centrally located hotels, comprehensive sightseeing, and authentic experiences. So now that you know a little bit about Vacations by Rail, I'd like to go ahead and launch our first polling question, which is, have you taken a rail vacation to the Canadian Rockies? And so we have three options up. It's yes on the Rocky Mountaineer, yes but not on rocky mountaineer and no so we'll leave this open for a few, little bit longer to give everyone a chance to participate okay looks like everyone has been able to uh participate with us. I'm closing the poll. 92% have not taken a rail vacation to the Canadian Rockies. Um, we do have a very small percentage that have done so, but not on Rocky Mountaineer and some that have as well. So I think that the majority of us are in the right place to either learn something brand new or to learn a little bit about, a little more about um, Rocky Mountaineer and these great destinations in the Rockies. So Michael, I'm gonna hand this over to you and you can tell us about this extraordinary rail journey. Well, thank you, Lynn, and good morning or good afternoon or good evening to those who are attending today. Um, thank you for, for joining us. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Rocky Mountaineer experience today and talk about some of our, our routes as well in Western Canada. And uh, of course, talk about the, the different classes of service on board the train. So. First of all, um, just to start things off, Rocky Mountaineer has been operating as a privately owned family company for over 30 years, taking guests from around the world on remarkable journeys throughout the Canadian Rockies. And as a, a daylight only train experience, uh, we offer breathtaking views of the iconic Western Canadian landscape during the day. And then we partner with the best hotels in the region to make sure our guests have a nice night's sleep um, in the evening and they don't miss the scenery because if you're traveling of course at night throughout this majestic scenery as you see in this cover slide here um, you're not going to be able to see the scenery so that's why we made a decision when we started the company to operate just during the day 
Our season operates from April to October, and uh, we've become known for our spacious and luxurious train coaches, our fantastic service, uh, delicious food, and engaging hosts on board the train who provide you with stories and historic insights about the, the region and the history of the rail in the Canadian Rockies. So back in uh, 1990, which you'll see in this next photo here, this is an image of our first rail departure uh, about 31 years ago. And uh, as you can see, and it's hard to see a little bit from the image, but the train was fairly a basic rail car. And when Peter Armstrong, our owner and our founder, had started the company, he had a vision for making Rocky Mountaineer uh, the best and most ex amazing luxury experience in Western Canada by rail. Fast forward to today, and Rocky Mountaineer has been named as one of the most wor world's great train journeys by everyone from National Ge Geographic to Condé Nast Traveler. Uh, amongst other many accolades that the company has received over the 30 years. And we're very proud of that. And um, right now, Rocky Mountaineer uh, is, is happy to say that we're operating our trains in Canada. And um, now that U.S. guests can travel into Canada for 2021, we'll continue to operate until uh, early October. I'd like to talk about the service on board the train. As you're going through some of the most rugged and spectacular scenery anywhere on earth really you're going to be enjoying the luxury of what our hosts and our staff on board the train will provide for you as you can see from the images here our hosts on board the train are not only going to be bringing snacks and drinks and providing that delicious food service that i'll, I'll explain a little bit in a moment but as you're traveling through the mountains and the spectacular rivers and, and rushing waterfalls in western canada you're getting to learn and hear about the history and the folklore of the region. And that's part of the experience is that connection with our hosts um, throughout the journey. And obviously dining is a big an important part of what we do at Rocky Mountaineer. We take great pride in our award-winning dining experiences. Our onboard culinary team always wows our guests with the delicious flavors of Western Canada. We try to reflect some of the regional cuisine um, typical day on a, a rail day on, on the gold leaf service, which we'll talk about more in a moment, but a typical day in gold leaf service on the train would feature a full breakfast with multiple uh, choices on the menu, uh, a full, full three course lunch with, with many choices of entrees, and of course, a delicious sweet dessert afterwards, as you can see in that photo on the left. And throughout the day, we also include snacks and beverage services included in both Gold Leaf and Silver Leaf. So whether you enjoy soft drinks, coffee, tea, or you'd like to have a cocktail, glass of wine, or a craft beer from Canada, it's all included in your package with Rocky Mountaineer on board the train. This map uh, does show our three major routes in Western Canada traveling between Vancouver and the Canadian Rockies. So we have uh, these three routes, two of them are two-day routes with an overnight in Kamloops. You'll see that that route that is colored sort of a wine red travels from Vancouver to Kamloops. Uh, you can see the white diamonds would indicate where we'll stop. The train will overnight. Your transportation is provided from the train to your hotel as well as luggage handling. So when you arrive at the hotel in Kamloops, your bags will be waiting for you in your room. And then the next morning, you're transported back to the train and get on board the train and take continue the journey to either Lake Louise or Banff. And we have Journey to the Clouds, which uh, makes kind of a diagonal route across British Columbia up to Jasper. And then we have a three-day, two-night route that's called Rainforest to the Gold Rush, which goes through Whistler and Quesnel and then on to Jasper. And you can see that green dotted line that travels between Jasper and Calgary. A good part of that is what we call the Icefields Parkway. I'm sure Melissa will talk a little bit about that, but that's just some spectacular scenery going through the national parks in uh, in Alberta. And it certainly is a must see to experience uh, that part of, of uh, the region. So let's talk a little bit about the two different classes of service that Rocky Mountaineer has to offer. Um, we have gold leaf class and we have silver leaf class. Uh, they're both um, a little bit different. And uh, guest seating in the gold leaf 
would be in the dome car up upstairs. The Gold Leaf is a bi-level coach. So you have a, a full dome car at the top uh, where your guests, guests will sit and relax in these beautiful leather bucket seats. And down below is a, a dining car. So guests will come down either a spiral staircase. We also do have like an open air um, lift, kind of like a small elevator that takes guests if, if anybody has any mobility concerns um we can set it up so that they would take the, the elevator down to the lower level for the dining experience and on the back of each of the gold leaf dome cars we have an outdoor viewing platform so you can go outside take photos of the spectacular scenery with silver leaf is a single level coach uh, your meals will be served right at your seat and it features large picture windows and very comfortable seating um, inside that that class of service each Dome car has two hosts um, to provide you with um, commentary, history, and uh, snacks and drinks. And we also have our culinary teams on board to provide the, the meal service as well. So here's another image of the Silver Leaf Dome coach. Inside the dome itself, you've got these huge picture windows. You have um, kind of a dome segment on the top of the, 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 the car itself to provide that Full viewing. It's like looking at a like a big screen TV, except you're traveling along through the scenery. Uh, guests are served their meals seat side with a choice of two hot entrees for breakfast and two hot entree choices for lunch. And we obviously are very concerned about every, everybody's uh, comfort and safety on board the train. So if anybody has any dietary uh, requests, um, i.e., you know, gluten free or any allergies. That's something to make sure you communicate with your uh, vacations by rail reservations agent so we have all that information on hand and we can take care of your needs that way. So another side view of the uh, single level uh, silver leaf coach with the big picture windows. Um, guests will board the train, sit back and relax, enjoy the scenery. Inside the coach itself, you've got uh, more leg room than an average domestic flight. Uh, first class seating. Uh, so when you look at something like the distance between your seat and the seat in front of you, you get a lot of room, very comfortable. The seat does recline uh, in between the, the two seats uh, adjacent to each other between yourself and your, your traveling companion. You have a charging station there to charge your uh, phones or iPads to take photos. And um, again, the guests uh, will be treated by the, the service from our hosts throughout the journey starting with breakfast and coffee and tea in the morning. And here's some guests enjoying uh, delivery of their dessert right at their seat. Uh, a large tray folds down right in front of you and um, just sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery while you're enjoying the delicious uh, savory and sweet dishes from Western Canada. Now the more popular service that we offer, uh, which is Gold Leaf, is our signature class of service. Uh, it's a bi-level coach, as I mentioned earlier, upstairs with a dome car and downstairs with a dining car. So you have a good side view of, of the car itself. It's obviously about three and a half feet higher than all the other uh, cars that we, we operate on, on the train. Consist, um, great view here of the train with the mountain scenery in the background. Interior of the dome itself, we've put a lot of thought into all the details. Uh, the full glass dome, climate controlled. Uh, you can actually see if you look at this window, uh, the, the the glass itself. The windows are tinted on the on the top part to protect our guests from the the UV rays of the sun. And um, the the seats are relaxing bucket seats that have um, kind of a remote control to to recline, lumbar support, uh, leg rest that comes up. And you can just sit back, relax, enjoy the beverage service and snacks while you're viewing the spectacular scenery going through these rugged mountain ranges in Western Canada and the Rockies. Then when it's time for breakfast and lunch, uh, we'll be called down in two groups. Um, typically, we have between 66 and 72 guests in the upstairs dome car. We'll have two seatings for breakfast and two seatings for lunch. Um, we have tables of four and tables of two down in the dining car where guests will toast to their journey and choose from anywhere from four to six entree choices. We'll always have a gluten-free and vegetarian option uh, for those guests who um, have those requirements. 
And then what's amazing about the Gold Leaf service that it inspires me the most when I get to see what our team does is that we have a dedicated culinary team and kitchen in every single Gold Leaf car. So they're preparing the meals fresh to order uh, for our guests on board the train for both breakfast and for lunch. And they're prepared and delivered right to your seat from that galley, which uh, is an amazing thing because the galley is so small to be able to, to serve all of our guests in one seating is quite a feat. And uh, they do it with style and precision. And then once you've enjoyed your meal, you can go back to the uh, rear of the Gold Leaf Dome car and go out to the outdoor viewing platform, which is one of my favorite places to hang out and just take in the scenery, breathe in that mountain air and start taking those great photographs that you can share with your friends and family, uh, either through social media or what have you after your journey or during your journey. And Great, some great images here of the, you know, just the scenery itself. This gentleman obviously taking a photo. One of the iconic photos that people love to take is the train as it's coming around a bend with the mountains in the snow-capped peaks in the background. Typical day on the train. We will typically board the train early in the morning, depending on the route and the day. We'll board the train between 7 and 8 a.m. Uh, once the train rolls out, we'll begin to serve uh, coffee and tea, and then we'll we'll start our breakfast service uh, on the train throughout the journey. The hosts will provide commentary as we hit certain mile marker points along the journey. You'll get to learn different aspects of uh, the history um, the, of the rail system, the mountain ranges, uh, some folklore, some fun stories. Um, they'll even maybe do a poem or two about the region, and then. Of course, they'll be spotting wildlife, and we usually have spotters in the front of the train that communicate with all of our hosts. So if they see a bear or a moose or mountain goats or whatever we see, eagles, uh, osprey, we will often see lots of wildlife throughout the journey, um, and that's a, another amazing experience. And then we have have lunch uh, early afternoon and enjoy some snacks throughout the day, and then we arrive early evening into our next destination, whether it be Banff, Jasper, Lake Louise, um, or others. This is a great shot on our journey through the clouds route, taking us uh, to Mount Robson. Mount Robson is the highest peak in the Rockies at almost 13,000 feet. Just an iconic mountain, uh, snow-capped mountain year round. Just, just awe-inspiring as you're spiraling your way towards Jasper. Also on that route, uh, this is a nice image of uh, Pyramid Falls. I'd like to point out here that the train averages about 35 miles per hour. I often get the question about how fast does the train go? Well, the train, we really travel at that speed that allows you to enjoy the scenery, take photographs, and we'll slow down to really a crawl or what we, we've often called in the past Kodak speed. So you're able to take pictures right from the, from the windows of your train car or on the, on the outdoor viewing platform here going past the, the beautiful Pyramid Falls. We'll also go through a lot uh, between the Kamloops and Vancouver. You have Hell's Gate along the Fraser River. Uh, this area that's been kind of closed in um, be, through rock walls has got rushing uh, rapids. And um, this is um, the largest salmon run in Canada. So it's really spectacular. And uh, tra train travels right along this river for quite a distance on, on that day between Kamloops and Vancouver. This is the approach as we get to Kamloops, the scenery, the, the topography starts to change to this dry canyon-like scenery uh, with gorges and uh, rock formations and uh, just di very different. Day, the first day on the train, the second day on the train, the scenery is quite different and diverse. So you get great photo opportunities on every uh, segment of this journey. And of course, the wildlife viewing is a big part of what mo folks want to experience out in the, in the uh, areas of Western Canada, BC and Alberta, of course, as well. So I uh, just wanna do a last minute here, show of the four routes that we have to offer. Uh, the journey through the clouds, again, a two day route overnighting in Kamloops, connecting between Vancouver and Jasper and uh, Rocky Mountaineer in partnership with Vacations by Rail. We have packages that combine the train with touring by motor coach or by rental car. So you can kind of choose packages based on the length of time you want to enjoy a journey and uh, or, or your budget. And typically 
most guests from the U.S. And, and internationally will take anywhere from eight to 12 day trip. Then they'll combine the rail with touring in the Rockies between Jasper, Lake Louise, Banff, and Calgary, featuring all the beautiful places in Alberta that um, Melissa will talk about in just a moment. Our most popular route is First Passage to the West, which is also the most, most historic because these are the original train tracks that were built uh, to cross Canada back in the late 1800s. They completed these tracks and it was really an engineering feat to carve the tracks through the mountains to go east to west and connect Canada all the way from coast to coast, um, which was from a historical standpoint, very important thing for, for Canada. As you can see, the train does allow our guests to deboard the train or board the train in either Lake Louise or Banff, depending on the package you choose and the type of uh, vacation experience that you wish to have. We also have our, our third route is called Rainforest to the Gold Rush. If it can open up for me here, here we go. Uh, this one does two overnights. So it takes the train from Vancouver to Whistler, which is about a half of a day, about three and a half hours between Vancouver and Whistler. So when you get to Whistler, you have a, an afternoon or in the case of the westbound route, and again, these tracks, uh, train routes go in both directions. You'll have a half a day to enjoy uh, Whistler and the, the beautiful um, resort town that it is. And then the train does two more days uh, up to Quesnel into more the northern part of British Columbia, and then kind of circles southeast down to Jasper and we cross into Alberta. So this is a, a three day, two night route, um, which is very rugged, very diverse scenery. And for those folks who maybe have traveled already with us, they, they typically will take this one as a second journey. Or if you're not sure which route you wanna take, we have about four or five packages that we call circle journeys. And this is an example of one of them called the Grand Rail Circle, which combines that rainforest to the gold rush route with our uh, first passage to the west route. And in between the train experiences, you've got two nights in Jasper, two nights in Lake Louise and three nights in Banff. So it's a very leisurely touring experience by coach in between the rail experience for um, four and a half days on the train. So if you want the most complete comprehensive I'd say diverse experience um, with Rocky Mountaineer. This would be a package that is highly recommended for sure. And we have about four or five other circle journey packages to, to offer. So um, I'm gonna hand the reins over to Melissa now, who's gonna talk about the beautiful province of Alberta. And um, Melissa, the floor is yours. All right, thank you so much, Michael. Um, those are some spectacular photos of the Rockies from the train, I love it. Um, so I am Melissa. I've had the pleasure of working at Travel Alberta for six years now, and it truly is a dream job. I get to represent my province and talk about why I love it so much. They pay me to do it. I love it. So let's talk about Alberta. It's the perfect spot for your next holiday, and we'll discover Alberta and how you can extend your journey after departing the train. We'll explore some of the unique experiences as we make our way from Jasper through the Icefields Parkway to Banff National Park and end our trip in Calgary. So of course this route can go any way and be flexible depending on which of Michael's journeys you prefer to choose. However, I'm going to take us from Jasper to Calgary on our virtual um, tour here. So just some quick stats about Alberta. Alberta is a sunny province. Not only is it number one in Canada for the longest sunshine hours per day in the summer, it also tops the most days of sunshine per year with an average of 333 days of sunshine per year. So no matter what the season, you are guaranteed sun. And let's talk about safety. So as of August 22nd, Alberta does have some very high vaccination rates. Um, we're actually currently at 77.3% of Albertans age 12 and above have at least one dose of their vaccine and 68.8% um, are fully vaccinated and that's of course growing daily. So high vaccination rates do mean a safer trip for you right now. So you can still book your adventure um, before October if you want to um, explore and if you kind of getting that travel bug like I know we all are. So let's quickly talk about Alberta's seven signature foods. Oh, sorry, let me go back. Alberta's seven signature foods. Um, 
So Alberta um, has um, a culinary scene that is flourishing. So we're bolstered by top chefs, local food and beverage talent, and award-winning restaurants. The province has definitely become a foodie destination in its own right. Um, a stroll through any of the unique neighborhoods in Alberta's mountain towns or cities will easily lead you to amazing restaurants that use local ingredients, such as honey, bison, Alberta beef, root vegetables, and more. So you can experience all the seven signature foods, not only on the train, but also at great restaurants or even on a food tour in any of the great uh, locations that I'll talk about. That's the best way to maximize your foodie experience. Um, did you know that Alberta is the fifth largest producer of honey in the world? So of course, we're also known for our barley and wheat. A trip to one of our brewery districts is a must. Another thriving industry in Alberta, we have more local breweries popping up than you can count. Distilleries too. So whatever your beverage of choice, we have it. Top quality made with local ingredients and themes. Another fun fact for scotch lovers, Alberta's barley has actually been shipped to Scotland for years to produce the famous scotch whiskey. So who would have known that your Scotland whiskey might have barley from Alberta? Um, we are now making our own Scotch whiskey in Alberta. The first was produced by Eau Claire Distillery, which is just outside of Calgary, bottled in 2015 and aged for three years before we could taste it in 2018. And mm, it was smooth. So let's look at our first destination on our virtual tour, which is Jasper National Park. It's the largest national park of the Canadian national park systems a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the world's second largest dark sky preserve. So if you're looking for mountains to hike and big wide open spaces to escape to, then Jasper National Park is the mountain and the mountain town of Jasper is what you need. You'll have the opportunity to see wildlife from a safe distance, of course. Um, you can take a guided wildlife tour and you may spot black bears, grizzly bear, elk, moose, bighorn, sheep, and deer, um, just to name a few. The town of Jasper offers a lot of shopping, culinary experiences, breweries, and all that with your 360 degree mountain view. One of the top experiences in Jasper is the Jasper Sky Tram. Here you'll discover Jasper from new heights. You'll travel to the top of the Jasper Sky Tram, which is the highest guided aerial tramway in Canada. The flight will take you to an altitude of 7,425 feet and into a whole new world. And once you reach the top, you'll enjoy a bird's eye view of the town of Jasper, which is actually shaped like a big J. Um, so it's pretty cool to see that Jasper even shaped like its name. Uh, you'll also see six mountain ranges, uh, ranges sorry, turquoise lakes and glacier, glacier fed rivers. In the fall, there are even star sessions at the top of the Sky Tramp. So if you book in September or October, you can experience the star sessions with dinner on top of the mountain. Another iconic um, stop in Jasper is, sorry, clicking is slow here, um, Moline Canyon and Moline Lake. So Moline Lake boat cruise is the best way to get out on the water. Um, enjoy a panoramic tour across crystal clear glacier fed water and cruise past Spirit Island, a world famous destination and it's only accessible by a boat. Moline Canyon, pictured on the right is a deep canyon carved by Devonian limestone, which was actually deposited by lime secreting plankton in a shallow tropical sea about 365 million years ago. There are six bridges taking you through the canyon above it. And for a gentle hike, you can head over the first and second bridges. The second bridge is the highest point of the canyon. And if you venture a little further, it'll take you to the Sorry, if you venture a little further, it'll take you to the third bridge, which is the best location to see a spectacular waterfall, and it makes for the perfect photo opportunity. Did you know there are fossils on site? You can actually see ancient snails, sea lilies, and shells, so keep an eye on the rocks. And after your Mullane adventures, you can enjoy lunch on the patio at Mullane Lake or at the new wilderness kitchen of Mullane Canyon. And another must see stop in um, Jasper is the relaxing and soaking and enjoying the mountain scenery in the 100% natural mineral water fed Mayette hot springs. 
The water comes out of the ground at an astonishingly hot temperature of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And pictured here, we have some guests wearing the traditional bathing garment that was worn, worn in the early 1900s. And you can actually rent one of these suits to get the perfect photo op, just like the couple in the picture. And yes, I have a picture of myself wearing this famous bathing suit. Um, one of the iconic accommodation um, accommodations in Jasper is the Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge. And this is a village of heritage log uh, cabins connected by picturesque paths and surrounded by incredible views of the majestic mountains and the Emerald Green Lake. The Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge is actually an experience in itself with top dining locations, cafes, boutiques and shops, outdoor heated pool, golf course, fire pits, bicycles, even a boathouse on the lake where you can canoe, paddleboard or kayak. And there's an evening experience, um, planetarium experience, to celebrate the Jasper as a dark sky preserve. And you can actually join astronomy experts for a stargazing experience through the largest and most powerful telescope in the Rockies. Now that we've made our way through Jasper, we'll head down the Icefield Parkway. And this is a corridor that takes you from Jasper to Lake Louise. Whether on a bus or self-drive, there are some amazing stops and activities along the way. This is considered one of the best drives in the world. Your journey along the Icefields Parkway will include some of the highest peaks in the Canadian Rockies, glaciers, waterfalls, and wildlife. Pato Lake, Hector Lake, and Athabasca Falls, to name a few, are some of my favorite stops. And did you know you'll also drive past the Crowfoot Glacier? This is the glacier that feeds into the Bow Lake. The Bow Lake then becomes the Bow River, and this river travels through Banff, Canmore, and Calgary and beyond. And it's Calgary's primary source of drinking water. So once you make your way to Calgary, be sure to reach for a glass of water and let me know if it's the best water you've ever had, because I know it is for me. One of the stops on the Icefield Parkway is the Columbia Icefield Discovery Center. So on your way to Lake Louise or Jasper, it's an informational center featuring shops, dining, glacier views, and some remarkable glacier experiences. The most famous experience is the Columbia Icefield Adventure. This combines two experiences that you see here on the picture. So um, you can actually step foot on one of the largest non-polar ice fields in the world. You'll travel on a massive ice explorer, pictured on the right, to a place where you can walk on, feel, and drink from the Athabasca Glacier. Then you'll take a jaw-dropping walk along the glass-floored skywalk at the cliff's edge, pictured on the left, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's a um, really unique experience, includes the transportation to and from the Discovery Center, which is very short. There are mere minutes from, from each other. And if you're looking for a really unique experience, you can stay overnight as they have a newly renovated Glacier View Lodge, and you can wake up to that view of the Athabasca Glacier. So then we'll make our way to Banff National Park, where we have Banff and Lake Louise. So, uh, sorry, Banff National Park is actually Canada's first national park and the birthplace of Canada's vast national park system. Banff National Park is famous for its hot springs, surreal colored lakes, majestic mountains, and endless outdoor adventures. It has a rich heritage as one of the world's most awe-inspiring mountain destinations. And what makes Banff National Park so special is its easy access and close proximity to the vast, unspoiled wilderness of the Canadian Rockies. The bustling town of Banff and the hamlet of Lake Louise are uniquely located in the National Park. So you, tr you truly feel immersed in the mountains and close to nature when you're visiting Banff and Lake Louise. And here we have pictured on the left, the iconic Lake Louise, world famous for its turquoise lake, the Victoria Glacier, which feeds the lake, soaring mountain backdrop and incredible hiking and skiing. Surrounded by a lifetime's worth of jaw-dropping sights and adventures, Lake Louise is a rare place that must be experienced to believe, to be believed. Um, if you stay at the famous Chateau Lake Louise, uh, you can see it pictured there at the base of the lake. 
um, you can you should wake up early for a spectacular sunrise on the lake, a view that cannot be compared. There are um, activities galore. You can take a casual walk along the lake shore. You can go canoeing on the lake. There are hikes to tea houses that are perched atop mountains. You can sit on the side of a mountain and drink a cup of tea. And we have world-class dining at the hotel. And pictured on the right is nearby Moraine Lake. Its waters are the most amazing color. It's a vivid shade of turquoise that changes in intensity through the summer as the glaciers melt. And it's set in the rugged valley of the 10 peaks. Moraine Lake is surrounded by mountains, waterfalls, and rock piles, creating a scene so stunning it almost seems unreal. You can sit lakeside and absorb the sights and pure mountain air or explore further by canoeing and hiking or simply enjoy a walk along the lakeside. And here we have the Lake Louise uh, Ski Resort and it's open for the summer. So they have a summer gondola and it lifts sightseers into the Alpine to experience the expansive beauty of Lake Louise. You'll travel almost 7,000 feet up, gaze upon the stunning views of the Victoria Glacier and you can take an award-winning interpretive tour to learn more about the area's history and wildlife. And you'll actually see um, grizzly bears gazing under its path. So it's amazing that you can see the grizzly bears in their natural habitat right below your dangling feet from a safe distance, of course. So then you make your way to the town of Banff. This is in a historic town. In all directions, you're surrounded by strikingly beautiful and rugged mountains that seem to burst straight out of the ground. You might see a herd of deer wandering down Main Street during your early morning stro stroll. The lively streets of downtown are lined with top class restaurants, bars and shops, as well as a vibrant range of art galleries and museums. This was once Siding 29 of the Canadian Pacific Railway. The town of Banff was always intended to be a tourist town from its very inception. The park's first superintendent even oriented the town's first street so that it offered the best possible view of Cascade Mountain, which you can see pictured here right at the center of Main Street, that spectacular mountain. So the Banff town site is, is you know, vibrant but small, easy to get around and accessible for everyone to explore and enjoy. You can head out on an all out shopping spree or just find a few essentials, a, a variety of shops that sell genuine Canadian goods and everything else you can possibly imagine. Now, there, um, the start of Banff National Park um, you would want to visit the cave and basin pictured on the right. Now, indigenous, indigenous people, sorry, had known of this site for thousands of years, but when a trio of railway workers in 1883 noticed steam venting from a crack in the rocks on the side of a mountain, they went over to check it out. And it led them to a large cavern full of mineral rich warm water, and they saw a chance to make money. And they also soaked in the hot water, of course. So a small structure was built so that paying guests could come take the waters and enjoy a warm soak. So if you visit the cave and basin, you'll learn more about the natural and cultural history and discover the hot water that seeps from the rocks and step into the cave and smell the, the minerals and see how this is the start of Banff National Park. So then you can visit the Banff Upper Hot Springs connected with the cave and basin that you've just visited and learned of the history, now it's time for you to soak. There are actually nine sulfurous hot springs on Sulphur Mountain, and the Banff Upper Hot Springs is actually the last remaining springs open to the public for bathing. Sunrise and sunset at any time of the year is a wonderful time to visit as the mountain air cools down. So even on those hot summer days, you'll find this warm soak so beneficial and relaxing. And the springs are open very late in the evening year round and up until 11 p.m. in summer. And to the right, we have the famous castle in the Rockies, the Fairmont Bab Springs Hotel, which is located in the town of Banff. And it's named after the start of it all, again, the famous Banff Hot Springs. This is a world class resort with top dining locations, cafes, boutiques and shops, spa, outdoor heated pool, golf course and located beside Bow Falls, which is a famous waterfall coming from Bow Lake, that lake that I mentioned that feeds the Bow River into um, Calgary's drinking water. 
We also have some luxurious hotels uh, right in downtown Banff. You want to be right, uh, right there on Main Street. So one of the ways to best then, you've experienced Sulphur Mountain, you've experienced the hot springs. Now let's float our way up Sulphur Mountain on the Banff sightseeing gondola. So this ride takes guests to a lofty altitude of above 7,000 feet and you float up in a cabin that seats up to four people. And once you're at the top, you can enjoy the best views in Banff. Amazing mountain ranges and you'll see the town of Banff from above. You can enjoy restaurants, cafes, short hiking trails and the new interpretive center. And pictured on the bottom left, we have Lake Minnewanka Boat Cruise. And here you can watch for wildlife, you can feel the fresh air and get adventurous on Banff's largest lake, but the boats are heated, covered, and means you can explore in any weather and in comfort. An actual fun fact about Lake Minnewanka is a famous scuba diving location. They actually had many dams erected in 1912, 1941, to provide hydroelectric power to the town. The most recent ban uh, dam that was built in 1941 increased the lake by 30 meters or 98 feet and buried the Minnewanka Landing Vacation Village, which has been there since 1888. So the lake is popular among recreational scuba divers because of the submerged settlement, underwater bridge pilings and underwater dam. After you've enjoyed your time in Banff, you'll head to Calgary with it, and there's a quick stop on to Canmore and Kananaskis. It's only 20 minutes from Banff and one hour to Calgary. The town of Canmore uh, and Kananaskis Provincial Park is another perfect destination to seek wellness and adventure in the Canadian Rockies. Um, Canmore is a charming mountain town and then Kananaskis is the more than 4,000 square kilometers or 1,500 square miles of wildlands surrounding it. The stunning valley on the eastern slopes of the Canadian Rockies. Together, the Canmore Kananaskis area is picture perfect and primed for any manner of adventure. So the uh, heart of Canmore is a vibrant downtown core. So this is nestled between the glacier fed waters of the Bow River again with the picturesque walking trails along Policeman's Creek in the grand year of the Rocky Mountains, you will discover a downtown unlike any other. So stroll down Main Street for an authentically Canmore experience. You can check out incredible art galleries, shop style boutiques, or indulge in a delicious patio lunch, all while soaking up the dreamy uh, mountain views. Canmore has a humble, small mining town beginning and now is a flourishing tourist destination. A few of the uh, iconic experiences, we have Alpine helicopters. Uh, it's a spectacular sightseeing tour in the heart of the Canadian Rocky Mountains. Um, you can fly above and view the Rocky Mountain topography and a little bit of history at the same time. And we also have some indigenous experience operators, Mahican Trails uh, pictured above. That's actually the owner in the picture, Brenda Holder. And she's a knowledge keeper of traditional medicine so you can actually join her and enjoy nature while also learning the fascinating um, history of med medicines of the boreal forest from a Cree lineage. So it's a great way to take in the sites while also learning about the past. Um, on the right, we actually have Yamnuska Wolf Dog Sanctuary, uh, Sanctuary. Now this is another great stop because it's in between Canmore and Calgary. So you'll make your way through the town of Canmore through Kananaskis and you can stop at Yamnuska on the way and this is a nonprofit sanctuary dedicated to driving awareness and education surrounding wolf dog ownership. They're a passionate group of animal lovers um, uh, and, and educational programs are offered, informational resources and assists in homing wolf dogs that have been neglected, abandoned or otherwise displaced. And Fun fact, did you know that Game of Thrones actually cast Alberta's white wolf named Quigley? Um, he plays Jon Snow's wolf companion named Ghost. So maybe it's time for you to rewatch Game of Thrones and check out our famous wolf, Quigley. So now we've made it to Calgary. Calgary is Alberta's largest city. It's either your first or last stop if you're going to fly in or out of Alberta. And it's a great city, lots of adventure, unique neighborhoods and family focused attractions. 
and it's set dramatically between the prairies and the mountain peaks. You can see in the picture there. So there are the Rockies in the background. That's where you've just come from. The city is right beside those amazing Rockies. Um, Calgary International Airport is actually one of Canada's largest airports. It's conveniently located only 20 minutes from downtown Calgary and offers direct flights to many locations in the US, Mexico, and internationally. A few of the top uh, experiences in Calgary, we have Studio Bell on the left. You can see it there in the background. Um, it's the home of the National Music Center. So this is located in the trendy neighborhood of East Village and Studio Bell is an architectural masterpiece. It features five floors of interactive um, displays, exhibits and memor memorabilia. Studio Bell celebrates the history of Canadian music and immerses guests in one of a kind musical and architectural experience. So we talked about the local breweries, local distilleries in Alberta. Did you know that Calgary is actually where the Caesar was invented? Now, some of you may be like, what, it, what is a Caesar? A Caesar is actually a cocktail, very similar to a Bloody Mary, but with more of a kick. So it's made with more spice. It's made with Clamato instead of tomato juice. And it has become one of Canada's most famous mixed drinks. So be sure to try one while you're visiting Calgary. Not only was it born in this city, but you could also get one made with a vodka produced with one of our from one of our local distilleries in the city's bustling distillery and brewery scene. So here we just have some, um, you know, beautiful art, uh, some walking paths. Calgary actually features a thousand kilometers of urban recreational pathways. This is the longest in the world. So Calgary is a great destination. Uh, year round, you can walk through the autumn colors or smell the perfume of a blanket of spring flowers or picnic by the river in the warmth of the sunshine while walking the paths. You can segue or bike these paths and explore the city and its vast parklands in all seasons. There are actually Calgary um, walking and bus tours so that you can experience Calgary one story at a time. It's an immersive walking tour where you will discover history, architecture, secret sculpture gardens, and cool public spaces. Calgary's spirit comes alive through over 150 pieces of eclectic art, history, and contemporary public art, many of which you will see in your custom walking tour. You can also explore Calgary by seeing the best of the city skyline in view of the Rocky Mountains at the Calgary Tower, pictured on the right. This iconic, or sorry, this icon defines the Calgary skyline. When you land in Calgary and drive your way from the airport to the city, you will see the Calgary Tower. It's 626 feet above ground and it has a glass floor, which is one of the world's highest 360 degree observation decks. And you'll see a panoramic view of the city and the Canadian Rocky Mountains where you just came from. So look back at your time from the Rockies in the Rockies from the city. On the left, we have, we have um, Heritage Park. This was in a is a historical um, village. Canada's large, largest living history museum is where you will meet fur traders, indigenous peoples, railway workers, and prairie town folks while exploring 180 buildings and exhibits on 127 um, scenic acres of parkland. They also have Gasoline Alley on site, which is a museum featuring pieces from the turn of the 20th century to the 1950s, including vintage vehicles and unique gasoline pumps. We've actually had a lot of um, films and movies um, at films, sorry, at um, historic Heritage Park just because it looks like the Old West. Um, you can also up on the left, you'll see the picture of the float uh, floating tour you can take. So this isn't river rafting, it's just a casual float tour down the Bow River. So you can enjoy the downtown views, float through some unique neighborhoods, float past the Calgary Zoo, but you can put your feet up and enjoy the sunshine while you're doing so. And lastly, we do have some really unique day trips from Calgary. Um, one of the best trips is a one point, it's only a 1.5 hour drive to the Badlands of Drumheller. So this town is built in the Badlands, which is a formation of Red, from Red Deer River Valley, and it's truly unique, you can see from the pictures. Um, you can learn about dinosaur fossil discoveries uh, at the Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology or wander the tight canyons at Horse Thief and Horseshoe Canyons, which is pictured on the right. Another close day trip includes Head Smash Jim Buffalo Jump. This is where you will learn about the cultural significance of this cliff to the Plains people. 
And lastly, you can discover Dinosaur Provincial Park pictured on the bottom left. This is a truly unique and unexpected highlight of anyone's trip to Alberta. You'll come to Alberta to see the Rockies, but you'll surprisingly be blown away by the unique landscape of the Badlands. You'll actually walk over bone beds and see an unequaled concentration of dinosaur fossils that make Dinosaur Provincial Park world famous. All right, so that is it for Alberta. Thanks, Thanks so much. That was so informative. I loved hearing about all of those great destinations that um, you, you can experience uh, after you take the Rocky Mountaineer into the Canadian Rockies. So um, we've heard about the great train journey. Um, we've found out, we got an excellent snapshot um, that Melissa provided of Alberta's national parks and resort towns and wonderful places to stay and things to do. So now I'm quickly going to share with you how we've packaged these incredible elements together for some well-planned rail vacations. So the first we're gonna talk about is Canadian Rockies featuring Banff and Lake Louise. And this is one of our most popular uh, vacations um, through the Canadian Rockies. It's seven days, begins in Vancouver and ends in Calgary. Um, you'll see that we have uh, two nights here in Vancouver where you can do a little sightseeing before you board Rocky Mountaineer for that two day all day light rail journey into the Canadian Rockies. So um, in addition to that journey from Vancouver um, aboard Rocky Mountaineer, um, we do take this to um, Lake Louise where you'll arrive in the evening and you'll have some time in the evening on day four of your trip as well as the morning of day five to enjoy this Alpine Hamlet. Now, the great thing about um, Lake Louise is not only the eponymous lake, but that looming Victoria Glacier right behind it. And of course, the iconic Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise is situated along its shores. And guests who travel on our deluxe level of service on this itinerary enjoy a stay at that hotel. So that's really an amazing experience. Um, from Lake Louise, you depart and you head to a scenic transfer to downtown Banff. And in Banff, we've arranged sightseeing that um, showcases not just the best of the town, but also the national park. So you're also, you know, highlights of this itinerary is going to include Cave and Basin National Historic Site, which we saw a picture of um, during Melissa's uh, session. Um, we're gonna visit the hot springs that made Banff famous. And we're gonna ride on that Banff gondola for the journey to the top of Sulphur Mountain. And then your journey concludes with an arranged transfer to Calgary. So the next trip we're going to talk about is exploring Western Canada. This is an eight day journey and certainly one of our most, uh, certainly very popular as well. You'll see it also begins in, begins in Vancouver and ends in Calgary, uh, Vancouver, where you're going to pick up that, that great Rocky Mountaineer journey. And here we're going to travel to Jasper. Um, from Jasper, we're going, you're going to overnight there, and then uh, you'll travel along the Icefields Parkway and take a glacier ride on, uh, on an ice explorer out to the Columbia Icefield, so you can step out onto the Athabasca Glacier, which is an incredible experience. And then we're going to continue the journey by scenic motor coach to Lake Louise. And your trip continues with a visit to Yoho National Park and in the famous spiral tunnels. And the excursion wraps up, as I mentioned, with a day to enjoy Calgary. And then you, your tour concludes. So next up, we have the Canadian Rockies Rail Journey. This is a seven day trip, again, beginning in Vancouver and ending in Calgary. Are we seeing the, the commonality there? And here we're gonna take that train directly to Banff. Um, on this journey, what's what's amazing, and Michael had called it out earlier, is just the the changing scenery, the mountain ranges, the rivers, the canyons, the forests. It's really uh, an incredible scenic journey. Um, we're gonna here we're gonna visit Lake Louise. We're gonna trek through Yoho National Park. Um, there's ample time to hike, bike, stroll through all of these lovely locations. Um, 
definitely time to shop in Banff. Um, one of the things that I think is really important is there's no sales tax in Alberta. So it's like everything is on sale for us if, if you're based in the United States. Um, it's, it's, great. it's a great place not only to pick up souvenirs, but just any old thing that, that interests you that you'd prefer to get there than at home. So do a little savings. Um, so after your night in Lake Louise here, then you're going to continue back down to Calgary where we do have an overnight. So um, time to explore some of the things that Melissa pointed out in Calgary. Here are some of the wonderful experiences you can see on this vacation, including right up here, that food on Rocky Mountaineer. I mean, the dining is genuinely spectacular. And the last itinerary we're going to talk about is the getaway to the Canadian Rockies. This is a nine day trip and it's pretty spectacular in that we are making a circle through the Canadian Rockies, beginning and ending in Vancouver. Um, so this includes not only the journey through the clouds route that Michael talked about, but the first passage to the West as well. Um, on this journey, you're gonna have amazing sights and experiences. We're staying in all the Canadian Rockies resort towns. Um, and you know, again, beginning and ending in Vancouver. So you don't have to worry about open jaw flights. You can just fly in and out of Vancouver. Um, here we begin, as I mentioned, in Vancouver, where you have a night to rest up before you board Rocky Mountaineer. Um, we will be staying in Kamloops. Um, the night of day two. And then after that overnight, we reboard the train. We journey through past um, Mount Robson, past Pyramid Falls, and other mountainous sites as the train makes its way to Jasper. And here we're going to travel after we stay overnight in Jasper, we travel along the Icefields Parkway to the amazing Columbia Icefield, where you have that chance to board that ice explorer that I was talking about earlier for the journey onto the Athabasca Glacier. And while we're here, we can also visit the Glacier Skywalk, and that offers that bird's eye view of the surrounding area. And then it's off to Lake Louise. So after a, a night in Lake Louise, um, we start the next day refreshed. You're going to tour through Yoho National Park with a stop at uh, Emerald Lake. You're going to continue to Banff, um, where that Banff gondola is definitely a, a great experience that you can expect to participate in. And then um, the next day, you, you board the Rocky Mountaineer and you take that journey back headed west. Um, sampling that first passage to the west route to Vancouver. So all of these vacations can be customized to meet your tastes and travel goals. They can also be taken in reverse, which is, which is something interesting to note. Um, just because we mentioned the journey going from west to east, it certainly can be accommodated east to west. Um, you can add additional hotel nights or sightseeing and select destinations, and you can upgrade your experience on the trains, at hotels, you can add private transfers. Um, really, you can make these vacations um, it's exactly as you, you want them. So the best way to do that is to contact a vacations by rail specialist and talk to them about customizing the itinerary that you're most interested in. So now it's time for our next polling question, and I'm going to go ahead and launch that right now. And it is, what do you most want to experience in the Canadian Rockies? So we're going to leave this open for just a little bit. Uh, go ahead and, and you, you can pick more than one, but go ahead and tell us what you're most interested in. We'll leave this open for about mm, 20 more seconds. Okay, great. It looks like just about everyone has responded. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And 56% of our, our attendees today have, have said nature and wildlife excursions are their most, the, the most, the um, experience they most want to enjoy, followed by 34% attractions and local activities. So that's that's spectacular. I think that any vacation that we've talked about or that we offer aboard Rocky Mountaineer certainly meets these um, meets these travel goals. 
So if you'd like to learn more about our Canadian Rockies Rail vacations featuring Rocky Mountaineer, you can request one of our brochures by calling 877-929-7245 or visit vacationsbyrail.com. So uh, we do have some special offers going on right now for 21, 2021 and 2022 travel. Michael, can you step us through the final call promotion? Sure, Lynn. Yes, uh, <clears throat> we have a final call for 2021 bookings. Of course, hopefully most of you know that the, the Canadian border is now open to U.S. travelers who want to fly into Canada and enjoy uh, Rocky Mountaineer and uh, Western Canada vacation. So um, we have um, about uh, six, seven weeks left in the season and still have plenty of space available. And if you book a 2021 package, uh, eight day or longer rail vacation, uh, you get two free hotel nights, um, which is valued up to $500 per couple. Meaning, so if you book a package, you can add a pre or post night in Vancouver uh, uh, or Calgary or, or one on each end, which is great. So you have extra time in those great cities out in that region. So um, definitely take advantage of that kind of last minute offer. And that's good through October 7th, which is essentially the last departure would be around that time. Um, we also have a Canada um, rail sale. I think um, you, you can speak to that, Lynn. Um, yeah. But I just want to mention also that for 2022, we've got a great promotion going on right now, uh, an early booking offer for 2022. If you're looking to, to make your vacation plans for 2022 in Rock, with Rocky Mountaineer, um, we've got an all aboard promotion with four perks. So not only the two extra hotel nights, but also a free dinner at one of your hotels, as well as an airport, private airport transfer, either on the beginning or the end of your journey. And that's happening right now for, uh, for qualified 2022 uh, travel on Rocky Mountaineer packages. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. And that Canada rail sale that's part of the second bullet, um, that's up to uh, $100 per person off 21, 2021 and 2022 Canada rail vacations with Vacations by Rail. So um, all the information on both of these offers are on the Vacations by Rail website. So um, before we get into some questions, I did want to tell you how you can make a reservation. Uh, you can contact any of our rail specialists toll free at 877-929-7245, or you can book online at vacationsbyrail.com. And my little insider tip for you is the rail specialist who assists you with your reservation, whether you book online or whether you um, call us, you will be contacted by a rail specialist either way. And that will be your dedicated uh, contact at Vacations by Rail until you return home from your trip. So we do have questions and I know we are uh, running a little short on time, but I, I think we should answer some of those. So let me go ahead and um, maybe pull some of these out. Here. So the first question we have is, uh, Michael, we'll talk about Rocky Mountaineer here. Um, how, do, how early does the train leave and how long are we on the train? That's a great question. Um, the train will leave typically on, on most of our routes in, in Canada will leave early in the morning. Uh, we want to board the train so guests have um, breakfast at a reasonable hour. Uh, so typically and anywhere from seven to eight o'clock in the morning, we'll be boarding the train. And uh, we typically will arrive into the next destination between 5.30 and 7 p.m. Uh, on average. Um, we're sharing the tracks with freight traffic. Um, so we, we, we basically use the, train, the same train tracks that um, Canadian Pacific and Canadian National Rail Lines are using so um, sometimes if there's um, freight traffic, we it might slow down our route to to make sure to make to arrive a little bit later into say Banff or Lake Louise or or Jasper. So we kind of give a sort of a window, um, and so you're typically on the train roughly eight and a half to nine and a half, maybe ten hours a day on the train. And trust me, you'll have plenty of snacks and drinks. So even if you don't, uh, if if you make dinner plans when you arrive. You probably don't really need to have too much to eat when you get into the next town because you're probably gonna have plenty of food and drink on the on the train, but uh, most folks will just get an appetizer or a bowl of soup when they arrive in the next destination. 
Right, fantastic. Um, here's a question about what gratuities are customary for staff servers on the train? Uh, that's a great question. Um, depends on, on whether you do gold leaf or silver leaf service. Um, typically it's between uh, 25 to $40 per person per day. Um, I would say a little, so on the higher side, on the gold leaf side, because there are more more hosts and servers in gold leaf than in silver leaf. But um, you can kind of budget that 25 to $40 per person per day. That's um, that's the, the most up-to-date information that I'm aware of, but obviously our website does update what we recommend for, for host gratuities. And obviously it's a personal decision. Sure. Um, do any of the routes traverse areas where there is no road paralleling the tracks? Absolutely. Uh, the train will go through some regions that you can only see by train. I mean, unless you have access to a private helicopter, uh, and I wouldn't say that that would be the best option through the mountains in some cases. So uh, the train does travel through some very rugged scenery, some very um, remote scenery, and, and, and certainly just awe-dropping vistas that you cannot see from a car. And obviously, if you were traveling by car, um, and you're driving, you're not going to be able to see much. So, um, and of course you don't, you know, unless you've got a, uh, a, a convertible, <laughs> you're not going to get that dome, dome viewing experience you would um, aboard the train. And, and of course the, the, the dining and the, and the, and the, the beverage service, you know, we, we provide top shelf liquor, beer and wine throughout the day. Um, so you can sit back and relax and, and not have to worry about driving. Let us, let us do the driving. Right. Um, that, yeah, I would love to, leaving the driving to you is the, is the best. Yeah. Um, so here's a question. Are masks required on the train? Um, for this season, we are re required at the moment, unless, unless the protocols and requirements of, of the, um, regional federal governments change, um, we are requiring, uh, uh, while boarding the train and, and before you're at your seat to have, um, a mask on and um, obviously when you're at your seat enjoying a, a, a drink or in, you know enjoying a snack and, and dining you, you wouldn't be required to be wearing the mask but it's, it's kind of that while you're up and moving similar to, to if you were on a plane okay that sounds great um is there a limit to how long i can stay on the outdoor viewing platform no, there's no limit. Um, we just ask people to be courteous and allow others the opportunity to get in position to take some photos themselves. I think for the most part, everybody's really courteous and 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 kind of you know takes their time and does their thing and, and kind of rotates around on the platform. You know, so no, but there's there's really no limits. I want to make one more comment about the kind of health and safety. You know, uh, we have uh, we've done everything in terms of and gone above and beyond. Um, provincial and national protocols for, for COVID safety in terms of our equipment on the train. We've upgraded our filtration system to the highest grade available filtration system for air circulation. Um, we're, we're doing pre-testing and we're doing a between between our guests being on and off the train, we'll, we'll, we'll do a full cleaning with um, uh, air filtration, uh, air, air cleaning devices. So We've taken everything we uh, that we possibly could as far as um, health and safety precautions because that's our number one priority for our guests. Mm, that's great. Um, I in similar to health and safety, we have a follow up question to the mask question: and must the masks be the N95s, or is would any mask do? It doesn't have to be an N95. We we just ask folks to have a face covering um, uh, as they as they're boarding the train or if they're getting up to to move to, you know, either to uh, the restroom or to their dine, dining car down below, mm -hmm. um, just, just while moving them out in the train. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about luggage. How is your luggage transferred from place to place? And is there a limit to the number of suitcases? Well, it's it's kind of a magical uh, trick. <laughs> that, um, when you board the train, so if you were starting in Vancouver, for example, when you board the train, your luggage doesn't, your checked luggage doesn't actually go on board the train itself. Um, so we don't have like luggage compartments on the train. Um, the luggage actually gets put into freight vehicles and those freight vehicles, they're traveling by, by highway. 
Uh, so from Vancouver to Kamloops, if you're driving, it's only a few hours uh, versus the, the, the eight, or eight or nine hours that you're going to be on the train. Uh, so since those, those vehicles can get to Kamloops hours before the train arrives into Kamloops, uh, that allows the staff at the hotels to be um, delivering your bags to your room and waiting there for you when you arrive. And um, they're going to be waiting to, for you to, to, to uh, unpack. And, and, and basically, all you need to bring on the train, we recommend a soft carry-on bag that would be um, like a just a handbag or a, like a, a small backpack. We don't recommend the rollerboard type of carry-on bags on the train uh, because there's really no, obviously, there's no overhead compartments. Um, and it needs to be something that would fit underneath the seat. So um, there's no limit. We, we don't have a, a limit per se to how many bags you can check and have delivered to the next hotel. Um, so if you have like a roller, um, like if you have a carry-on bag that you take on the plane, that's a rollerboard style, and you don't, you don't want to bring that on the train, you can have that checked and delivered to the next hotel. We would just tag, tag the bags accordingly, which we'll do the night before you depart. Uh, we always have a check-in uh, at, at your hotels the evening before your train departure. So your, your um, Rocky Mountaineer um, guest services host at the hotel can provide you with an extra luggage tag if you need it. All right, great. Um, we have time for one more, right? Sure. Uh, what is the max capacity occupancy on the train? Like your va the vacations aboard Rocky Mountaineer, how many how many folks can the train hold? Well, that that's sort of a two part answer. Not knowing the if the question's tied to the entire consist of trains or just one rail car. Um, right. So I'll answer that with with diff different answers. Um, right. The Silverleaf equipment can accommodate up to fifty four guests. Uh, the, the gold leaf cars, we have two versions. So one can accommodate about 68 and the other 72. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's a, it's a much longer piece of equipment than a standard motor coach. So you have this long dome car um, and, and that's, that's the maximum that will accommodate. Um, up until the end of August of this year, we we're actually going at 60% capacity because of um, government and COVID regulations. But starting September 1st, we are going to be um, maximizing our capacity or op we're able to operate at full capacity uh, starting in September and moving forward unless something changes. So that, that's about the size. Overall, uh, we've had as many as um, 16, 18 rail cars in a consist, which would be, you know, six, five, 600 guests um, traveling at one time. Um, but that obviously this year isn't happening at, at the moment, but I think given the trends and the popularity right now for 2022, I would imagine we'll get back to the, the kind of numbers we had um, you know, two and a half years ago. Wonderful. Well, I know we have gone it over. I appreciate everyone sticking with us for the Q&A. Um, and I think it's been pretty riveting. We have a lot of questions that we have not had a chance to get to, but a Vacations by Rail uh, travel specialist will be reaching out to you individually to ensure that if you did have a question that they are answered. Um, so that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Michael for one last goodbye. I just want to say thank you for, uh, for joining us today. I hope you found it interesting, exciting, and motivating now that you and, and are interested in traveling with Vacations by Rail, Rocky Mountaineer, and, and traveling through the beautiful province of Alberta. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Michael. And Melissa did have to uh, call off a, a bit early, but I know that she really appreciates your time and, and having the opportunity to present all the best of the Canadian Rockies to you. So thanks for joining us and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.